Hello, you are watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major stories from around the world. Let's take a look at the headlines. Filipinos mark anniversary of People's Power Revolution. Two Palestinian hunger strikers released from administrative detention. Brazil considers reduction in fuel prices. In our first story, as the Philippines gears up for high voltage general elections in May, activists and social movements took to the streets on the 36th anniversary of the historic People's Power Revolution and used it as an opportunity to say never again. Hundreds congregated at Quezon City, near the national capital, to commemorate the anniversary of the EDSA 1 revolution on February 25th. The 1986 protest, which began on February 22nd and 25th, was the result of a mass upheaval that included student movements, trade union groups, and progressive and pro-democratic movements. It eventually brought down the autocratic and militaristic government of former President Ferdinand Marcos. The fall of Marcos was marked by a new era of democratization in Filipino political culture. Demonstrators gathered at the People Power Monument in Quezon City, near the Edsa Avenue, which was the epicenter of the 1986 protests. Left-wing and progressive movements and leaders were present at the demonstration, including a progressive senatorial candidate, and Renata Reyes, the leader of the left-wing Bayan Party, along with opponents of the Duterte administration. In the coming elections, Marcos' son, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. or Bongbong Bong Marcos will be contesting for the post of president. This follows the controversial administration of Rodrigo Duterte. His running mate Sara Duterte is the current president's daughter and is known for a right-wing and iron-fisted style of functioning during her tenure as the mayor of Davao City. The two are currently leading by significant margins in all major polls. Progressive movements in the Philippines fear a continuation of the legacy of what are arguably two of the bloodiest and most controversial presidencies in recent memory under the joint Marcos Jr. Sara Duterte government. In our next story, two Palestinian administrative detainees who had waged extended hunger strikes against their illegal administrative detention by Israel were finally released from custody on February 24th, according to a report by the Wafa News Agency. Hisham Abu Hawash and Migdad al Kawasme, who were on hunger strike for 141 and 114 days respectively, had managed to pressurize Israeli authorities to end their illegal and arbitrary detention. Over the last year, they, along with several other Palestinian administrative detainees, had launched hunger strikes to bring attention to the injustice and cruelty they were facing in Israeli prisons. Hawash was arrested on October 2020 and placed under administrative detention, launching his hunger strike in August 2021. Kawasme was detained in January 2021 and began his hunger strike in July that year. He had previously been imprisoned by Israel for four years for his resistance activities against the occupation. Both the detainees had suffered very severe health consequences and complications during the hunger strike. Despite repeated protests against the brutal practice of administrative detention, Israel continues to use it. The administrative detention orders against Palestinians can be renewed every four to six months, effectively keeping them in detention. In January, it issued 96 administrative detention orders, 51 new and 45 renewal ones. It had issued 1,595 such orders in 2021 and 1,114 orders in 2020. And for our final story, Brazil's parliament is currently considering proposals to reduce fuel prices. The move was prompted by a 46% rise in the price of gasoline. On February 24th, the Senate debated two projects to address this issue, however, a vote was postponed. The first was a bill authored by the Workers' Party Senator Rogerio Carvalho. It sought to regulate the sale of fuel and change the import parity policy. Overall, there are four such proposals in front of Brazil's Congress to address the price rise. Here is a video by Brazil de Fato on this issue. With the fuel prices hiking, four proposals are proceeding in Congress to reduce the oil derivatives prices. The most recent proposal is the proposed constitutional amendment on fuels, or PEC dos combustíveis in Portuguese. It has the support of Senator Flávio Bolsonaro, one of the president's sons. However, this proposal is not getting a warm welcome among the government's economic team. Today, the central bank is afraid because their conclusion on the proposals is that they won't contribute to reduce significantly the fuel prices and will cause inflation. I think that this evaluation is correct. The project came as a provocation. Governor, lower your tax. As if it were easy for a governor to give up 20, 25 or 30 percent of the state's revenue, which is the fuel tax, to use the money from schools, hospitals and public safety to subside fossil fuel is the total opposite of any progressive environmentalist logic. Parliamentarians from the Workers' Party are the authors of an alternative bill that creates a price range for fuel and a subsidy fund. 
The goal is to try to contain the impact of the oscillation in the price of the oil barrel and dollar exchange rate. We propose that when an oil barrel exceeds $40, it's very profitable and therefore there must be a tax to discourage the export of crude oil and stimulate the refining of part of it here. Also, to create a fund to cover the cost of importing diesel and natural gas with zero harms to Petrobras, guaranteeing approximately 50% in reais. What business has 50% in profits? The Workers' Party parliamentarians admit that the bill is not the ideal solution and criticize the price policy adopted by the Brazilian government since 2017. The problem with Brazilian fuel is that it's dollarized. The government adopted the international parity price. As long as that doesn't change, everything the government proposes will be like made in old clothes, never solving the problem. And that's all we have time for today. For more such stories, visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.